See, there are some people who join and leave, thinking that their attendance is being marked. Uh, sorry, their attendance will not be marked because once they join and leave, both times are recorded. So if there is any misconception that you join and leave, then your attendance is marked. So don't join the class for attendance sake. If you don't want to come, then don't come. It's as good as that. Okay. Because perhaps yours is the last batch that I'm interacting with.
Right. Good morning, everybody. Yes. Good morning, sir. 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 Good morning. See, uh, is a transparency reflected on your screen? It says centralized HR department in a large organization. Uh, basically, we are looking at the organizational structure uh, and that too of HR only. No, we are not looking at other things. Because if you look at here, at the top, we have written chairman and managing director, C and D. And then we have got four area directors below that. Have director technical operations, director marketing, director finance, and director human resource management on the right side of it. Uh, we're not concerned with the first three departments. The HR department has got three sub areas which is listed here. They're saying manager personnel manager administration, manager HRD, and at the end, there is manager industrial relations. Right. Now, manager personnel has got function like grievance management. He has to do function like human resource planning. He has to look after the compensation part of the employee and he has also to look after the recruitment and selection of those employees who are there. So that falls under the manager personnel. A manager personnel is assisted by assistant managers in the area. And there would be four different assistant managers, assistant manager grievance, assistant manager HR, human resource planning, assistant manager compensation, and assistant manager recruitment and selection. They will further be assisted by personnel officers and they will have smaller functions within that function, sub functions that they have got to perform within uh, the area. Then we have got manager administration, uh, which is having large number of functions to perform. Manager administration will look after the maintenance of guest houses or guest house, depending on the size of the organization. Since we're talking about a large organization, so there will be more than one guest house that will be an operation. There will be more than one canteen facility that will be maintained. We also look after the transportation. Now this transportation has got two parts, transportation of the managers and transportation of the employee both part will be covered by this transportation so they will have the drivers they will have the vehicles maintained and they will have the drivers being maintained all kinds of operations for transportation will be done similarly we also have got medical facilities which is there under the manager administration whether it is maintenance of a dispensary or it is a small hospital or it is just maintenance of first aid boxes, uh, ambulance, nurses, trained nurses, male and female. So that will be the medical facilities depending on what the organization is providing. They also look after the maintenance of records of medical uh, facilities. If outdoor facility is provided elsewhere, or if admission facility, indoor facility is provided elsewhere, then they have got to maintain a record, a reimbursement of amount or transfer of the amount, that amount, if they have got collaboration with other hospitals which are there, that will fall under the medical facilities. Uh, just a, sir, just a query, but sir, reimbursements of, uh, like reimbursement of certain amounts comes under the financial part. Like no, you have to... No, only amount check is issued by the finance department. Okay, Every sir. clearance has to be done by the medical section, which falls under manager administration, right? Okay. So, sir, like the promotional events, like a person will be getting promotion or bonus will be under HRM only? B bonus 
is a separate thing promotion is a separate thing don't combine the two bonus will be given by the personnel manager who has to look after compensation as a whole okay okay sir okay now we have got public relation uh, which is also falling under the manager administration sometimes this public relation in some organization is done by the marketing department so personal uh, this public relation is something which you know covers more than one uh, functional department but primarily it is the function of human resource management similarly we have got welfare amenities that is to be provided to the employees be that cooperative stores be that any other kind of welfare amenities say they have got to you know maintain a crash for the children of the employee they have got to maintain maybe schools that will be done by the manager administration they will also uh, look after the recreational facilities if any within the welfare that has to be done the dresses that is uh, given within the welfare is done by the administration so all those part will be falling under the manager administration and as we said they are assisted by large number of uh, assistant managers and of personal officers administrative officers then the third category is human resource development human resource development as such uh, we said was not forming part of human resource management earlier but post 80s uh, we find that this has been added to uh, this particular function it has got two primary function we call it performance management and we call it training and development now once we say performance management it is not only performance appraisal that is being done it is also looking after the potential appraisal it is also looking after the career uh, development and career planning part of it so therefore performance management would be a broader function that is performed within the organization whether you want it you know high performance work system is also part of the performance management system similarly training and development as we said having two parts training and development would be one part would be just training and another part will be development this training will include training administration this training will include maintenance of training college if they have their own or hiring i uh, outside uh, training facilities if it is to be done or if it is to be arranged they will also have got to look at the training material uh, learning material that has to be provided they have got to look after the uh, you know administration of it in terms of nomination of those people identifying training needs of the employee they will look after as to when a person should be posted on training what curriculum they have got to learn and what with they will have to do upon return it will also include the evaluation process now development as we said is a long term process rather than a short term process it is more proactive rather than reactive and therefore once we talk about development uh, where training stops working uh, we find that there are certain things that has to be added although training leads to development yes but the, at certain point training stops giving fruits and therefore other measures have to be followed uh, within that system uh, which will be part of the development process that they have got to follow we'll go through that in the second unit perhaps then we have got a manager ir ir as we said is a fire fighting function here uh, industrial relations as we all know uh, is to be maintained the organization has to maintain a harmonious relationship between the management and workers because normally the interest of those who are maintaining the organization and workers are contradictory to each other because they will be the manager would like to have 
more and more productivity for the organization where organize uh, you know workers would like to maximize their interests in terms of their wages in terms of the facilities now what we find that it's an automatic gulf that exists uh, from time immemorial since the organization came into being and this particular function is to minimize that gap maintain harmonious relationship within the organization because it is said that peace is directly proportional to uh, you know, productivity whereas if the peace is not there that will it will be inversely proportional so both uh, ways so most organization they cannot do away with the you know conflict that is there conflict of interest but as far as possible they would like to maintain a harmonious relationship within the organization and therefore the whole lot of programs have to be organized those programs within ir uh, would be empowerment of the employees empowerment of the workers that is there it will also have programs for women empowerment within the that they will also have within this uh, the, the different machineries if uh, that will be in operation so there will be prevention of dispute machinery which is meant for prevention of disputes uh, within the organization through participatory management or through uh, discussions across the table which we call as collective bargaining or it will be if that doesn't work we also have got grievance procedure within uh, the organization that will operate within the ir we also have got you know maintenance of discipline within the organization that will be part of the preventive measures uh, that is there then there are settlement measures if it has already occurred the dispute has already occurred the strike has already you know taken place in the organization we have got settlement machinery to follow so we have got conciliation machinery that will be there we will be having adjudication uh, sorry uh, you know arbitration machinery which will be there we will be having adjudication machinery will, that will be there adjudication machinery will be a three tier machinery comprising of labor court so i'm sorry to interrupt so can you please repeat this actually i had some connectivity issues so i could not hear that properly before adjudication committee see i i said that there are two machineries which are in operation one is called preventive machinery that you would have heard of and there is another thing called settlement machinery within settlement machinery we have got conciliation we have got adjudication sorry uh, arbitration arbitration will be of two types one is called voluntary arbitration another one is called compulsory arbitration and then if all these fails there will be adjudication machinery which is there adjudication is a three tier uh, machinery comprising of labor court industrial tribunal and national tribunal depending on the nature of cases so all you know issues that is mentioned in the first schedule first and second schedule of the id act of 1947 is looked after by the labor court any issue that remains unresolved at the labor court and is falling under schedule 3 will be taken up by the industrial tribunal or the cases that is referred to uh, by the government to industrial tribunal it will be looked after by the industrial tribunal then we have got the national tribunal only cases of national importance cases under emergency cases which comprises cases of more than one state uh, involved uh, will be taken up by the national tribunal or any other case that is referred to it by the appropriate government in this case central government because earlier appropriate government is a state government as well as central government but in case of national tribunal it is only the central government which is the appropriate government uh, which we have so we'll go through each one of them uh, once we uh, get to different units where ir is also part uh, i think in the fourth unit we have got industrial relations to cover right now if you have any question in this uh, you know hr department the organizational structure 
I do have questions. Now, if you look at these connecting lines, the first connecting line is mentioned here. This connecting line basically shows that it is the reporting relationship that is there. So we have got four directors who are reporting to the chairman and managing director of the organization. Mm -hmm. Or there can be chairman as a separate person or managing director as a separate, different person. Then each director is reported by the area managers uh, who are there. And each area manager will be reported by the officers and assistant managers who are there. So basically these lines are showing the reporting relationship. That is who reports to whom uh, that is there. Beyond that, it does not. And each of these boxes are basically the position uh, that is being occupied with their designation that is being mentioned. What is the exact work that they are doing is not reflected as far as uh, this organizational structure is concerned, right? So I'll uh, move from this topic. So if you uh, have I any questions. Uh, uh, I yeah. have a question. Like, mm. sir, you are saying that all the training and uh, development part occurs in the manager HRD. So like, so a person is uh, going on site so all those details that will be handled by training and development part or like the individual manager? What do you mean by individual manager, my dear? Like, sir, the person, uh, the manager who... Training in marketing you... area. Training in marketing area, yes? Okay, sir. Training, I, I understand what you are trying to say. Say if somebody is to be trained in the marketing area. This is training of the internal employee. We are not talking about training of a management graduate when they join, uh, you know, any organization as apprentice, right? There too, it has to be cleared by the HR department. They are going to post as to where you will work. Okay. The whole thing will okay, be looked sir. after by the HR department. Neither. I was saying that uh, suppose a person is uh, working that in that company and for some work he or she is going on site so that uh, information which will be holded by which one like which department will it be holded if they are by... going to work no, no if they are going to work on this site is not part of training yeah? okay sir that will be covered by their individual department okay okay okay, okay. the area of specialization that is there is okay. there any other question that you have uh, no sir okay now I will move to uh, another uh, topic that is there in your uh, syllabus. I'll just see where it is. Not in this one. Just hang on. Let me see the transparency that I developed for you. Can you see the pyramid that is uh, there on your screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, this, is, yes, sir. Yeah. this is basically uh, the organizational pyramid that was being developed by a gentleman called Gisbert, G-I-S-B-E-R-T, right? And therefore, we call it Gisbert's classification of organization. But this, the one you are seeing here uh, is a modified uh, one because once we say Gisbert classified uh, that you have got top management which included the CEO of the organization. Whereas in this one we have uh, put CEO as a, different, a separate set and top management uh, is being put as a separate set. 
CEO, we all know who are top management people, by the way. Who are top management people? Uh, if you uh, just if we saw organizational structure, would you be able to tell me who would be in the top management? Directors. The board of directors. The board of directors. Board of directors. Yes. So CEOs are above Sir. board of directors. Some managers, uh, some managers who are like uh, reporting to directors. Sir, so like yes, sir. Like for example, if there's a chief human resources officer who uh, comes under top management, he or she might report to the CEO about the activities that are taking place in the organization. No, that is why uh, I said that this bird's classification includes top management. CEO is a part of top management and therefore it will be CEO of the organization. It will be chairman and managing director of the organization. It will be all directors and deputy directors uh, who are of different functional areas. They will be falling under the top management. Uh, we call them top management because they are the ones who are basically you know, giving direction to the organization. So they are the ones who will decide upon what an organization would do. They decide upon what growth they want to achieve, what products and services they would like to venture into. So they basically determine the direction in which the organization would be going. So they are the ones who are planning for the long-term future of the organization and interacting with the middle management for translating the vision and mission of the organization into reality, right? Did you get my point? So, uh, so, so yes, yeah. yeah, so, so you basically, so they are actually um, um, assuming the organizational goals or the, the organizational goals that they want to achieve is a, is a responsibility of the top management that you're saying, right? I'm saying it includes total planning part of it. Planning will include as to what an organization should do, what manner they are going to do it, when they are going to do it, and how they are going to do it. What products and services they must decide. Are they going to be working alone? Are they going to have, you know, joint ventures? Are they going to, you know, have, uh, you know, products which are of the same line, are they going to have diversification of the organization? Everything will be decided upon by the top management, right? And okay. therefore, what we find is that top management involvement is more mental than physical, okay? Uh, it is the middle management who are heading different departments. So we said manager, of HR area will be there, manager of uh, marketing area would be there, manager of different areas within uh, the marketing and HR area or operations area or IT area or finance area would be there. And those are the persons who are heading different departments. So middle management is basically, we are saying, they are also called departmental heads, right? Now, these departmental heads basically interacts uh, with the top management and translate uh, the vision and mission of the top management into reality. So they interact with the supervisors and give them a direction as to how that vision and mission is translated, how they are going to achieve it, what methods they have got to adopt, when they are going to do it. All those things will be done by the middle management, that is the departmental head. What target is to be achieved, they have to determine the targets of different departments within the organization. They have got to determine as to how, if the target is not achieved, what efforts are going to be made. That will be the determination of the middle manager or departmental heads that we are saying, highly powerful person within the organization, but they are the ones who are actually translating
fitting uh, that into reality and interacts with the supervisors. Now, supervisors, as we said, is also called line managers or first line managers, right? So officers that we talk about, say whether it is HR officers or it is marketing officers or any other person would be falling under the group of supervisor per se, who are also known as first line manager, who are actually working in the fields, who are the ones who are supervising the team uh, who are working with them, so that they will be having different teams which will be working under them. They will be heading those teams and make that team function, make them feel. And in marketing area, sometimes we call them feet on a street as well, right? They are also called feet on a street. They are also called line managers or first line managers who are there. So they are basically the managerial cadre, the top three cadres which are there. Then we have got the lower portion here, which we have written as line workers. Now, in modern organizations, they are, there is nothing like line workers as such. But since they are working on the ground, we call them line workers. Now, line workers are divided into two parts, right? They are called blue collar workers as per this, but, and there is another category called high blue collar workers as per this, but. Now, high blue collar workers, basically this terminology has been taken from uh, uh, the British system who has uh, to wear a particular color of the collars. So uh, you might have seen uh, that the lawyers uh, even today in India wear a white tie or a band that is there in their necks. So that designate uh, as to what they are doing. See in Britain, uh, we know at that point of time, now the weather has gone mild, uh, but earlier the, it used to be very, very cold uh, and workers have got to go to the uh, you know, industry early morning. So they were wearing pullovers or they were wearing coats uh, where nothing was available to them. And therefore, they used to wear a particular color of collars, which would determine as to which category they belong to. Because depending on the category, they were allowed facilities in the canteens. So even in the university system today, if you visit Oxford or if you visit Cambridge, so you will find that there are three types of canteen that exist within the colleges. All Oxford colleges would have three types of canteens. So there will be high canteens, uh, which is meant for the dons and the faculty members. Uh, there will be middle canteen, which is meant for uh, the uh, research scholars, the fellows who are there. And there is a lower canteen, which is meant for the students. And that is dependent. Similarly, in the factory system uh, there, the industry system there, they used to have different types of canteens. Those canteen was meant for the managers. Those canteens were meant for the high blue color workers and blue collar workers. There were separate seats for white collar workers as well, who are the clerical personnel who are there within the part of the organization. So once we say line workers, there are categories of high blue collar workers and blue collar workers. Blue collar workers are those who are actually working on the field, performing most of the manual work, whereas high blue collar workers are basically technical staff they will, that will include engineers, that will include, uh, see, persons who are, you know, technicians, those who are working with the machines, they are basically highly trained, technical, technically qualified people who are part of the high blue collar workers. And their salary level may be more than 
uh, the first line managers in large number of cases. These high blue collar workers are paid handsomely. They are paid as much as some of the middle management uh, staffs, depending on what job they are performing within the organization. Now that's, that is how it is being classified, but they are not part of the administrative setup, the managerial setup of the organization. They are the in the technical setup of the organization. Therefore, we have got high blue collar workers and we have got blue collar workers who are there. Now what we find that Gisbert has gone a step further. Gisbert has also classified uh, the uh, workers of unorganized sector and agricultural sector as well. And he puts it outside uh, this pyramid at the bottom that their status uh, is at the bottom. And they are also performing the functions, but they are doing it on their own. They are not supplying to, uh, you know, an organized setup, but they are going through it. So all small scale industries will not be part of the unorganized sector. Small scale industry will be part of the organized sector of the economy. Therefore, what we find that with this classification, uh, we find that the facilities are being determined. The salaries of these employees are being determined. The training requirements are being determined and other promotional avenues are there that a person who is in the category of a supervisory or first line managers with due course of time as they gain experience as they gain knowledge they are being promoted to the higher ranks they get into middle management positions and from middle management position to top management position and may become a ceo of the organization may become chairman and managing director of the organization that is there. Among the directors, there are two types of directors who are there in the organization. There are regular directors of the organization and there are directors which is nominated by the government or nominated by uh, the shareholders to represent their interest uh, within the organization. This is especially true for the public sector organization where sometimes some academicians are also uh, being nominated to the board of directors uh, as far as these organizations are concerned. Okay. Is it clear? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any question that you have? No. Sir, Any? can you please repeat about uh, white collar workers? Now, white collar workers are basically clerical personnel who are doing repetitive jobs in the organization and are supporting management uh, in their working, in preparation of records. They are the ones who are basically having all those typing works which are to be done. They have got to do all the communication stuff which are there. They do feeding of the data which is there. Although in today's terminology, when we are talking about real -time, online real-time operations, large amount of data is being fed by uh, the persons who are actually working as the data gets created it is being fed by them but clerical personnel would be doing all kinds of batch processing which is required within the organization because as far as this data processing is concerned uh, are of two types as we said there is on time real time online real time operations as and when data gets created, it is fed into the system. And there is a batch processing where it is being accumulated and fed uh, within an appropriate time. Upgradation has to be done and maintenance of record has to be done within the organization. So this white collar workers are basically involved in batch processing. They are involved in communication, uh, providing communication support uh, within the organization. Okay. Any okay, thank question? you so much, sir. Any other question that we have? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, you just mentioned that line workers are further uh, divided into blue collar workers and high blue collar workers. Am I right, no, sir? No, line workers, yes. Yes, sir, line workers. So, mm. sir, what is the difference between the high blue collar workers and blue collar workers? See, I said blue collar workers are basically manual workers 
who are not operating with machines they are not technical personnels right they are non technical workers in the organization most sir we can say laborers as blue collar worker laborers oh, yes yes they are blue collar workers i dear they are the ones who are actually blue collar workers but labor yes, would be of two types they are our workers laborers who would be trained technical personnel as well so all engineers all technical personnel who are there who are operating machines maintaining machines they will be falling under the high blue worker category because in india we have got a term called engineer uh, which is of course a dignified terms and only person who has got acquired a btech maybe or any other similar qualification would be termed as engineers whereas in british connotation or uh, in the in the american parallels an engineer does not mean somebody who has got qualification like btech they are called engineers they are qualified engineers but there are non qualified engineers as well though those who have received training in the operations of machines maintenance of machines not necessarily a btech graduate or an mtech graduate who will be termed as engineers here the persons who are operating these machines are also termed as engineers right so those who are basically maintaining and operating lathe machines they are also or they are operating and maintaining earth movers they are also called engineers and fall under the category of high blue collar workers and those who are operating on the floor uh, with shovels with other things and manual workers who are basically feeding into the system they are blue collar workers you get the point okay thank you But, so much sir okay any other question that you have now 